Welcome to our course on construction grammar. Today I'm going to give you a very short overview of language, grammar and what construction grammar is. And there's going to be a sneak preview on a construction grammar approach to English. What does the term grammar mean? Well, according to the OED, it can either be a book like the Comprehensive Grammar of the English Language, or it can be the abstract system of inflections and syntactical usages characteristic of a language. So that would treat grammar basically as syntax. But some definitions cover more than that. For these people, grammar is actually the study of language, and that includes the relations of words in the sentence, phonetic systems, writing systems, and so on. A third definition for grammar is the science, which aims to furnish a scheme of classification capable of including all the grammatical categories recognised in actual languages. And finally, an individual's manner of using grammatical forms. Now, construction grammar is a scientific theory of language, so it falls under the third definition. And for construction grammar, grammar means words, syntax, plus, as we will see, a lot more. In addition to that, construction grammar adopts a cognitive approach. So we aim to look at the mental grammar of speakers of an individual. So what is in our mental grammar? Well, an uncontroversial element are words. So words like apple, which in German is apfel, in Hungarian alma, and in French pom. As you may remember, the Caesarian definition of this, of a word, is a symbol, a linguistic sign. So it's an arbitrary pairing that must be conventional of form and meaning. Form stands for signifier or sound. So if for English, apple, we've got a, p, l. And that is linked to a concept, a signified, the meaning of this symbol. Now we've abbreviated this in this example just by single quotation marks. But what we mean by this is, of course, the concept that underlies this, which for you might include the shape of an apple, what it tastes like, what it looks like, where you can find it, how it grows, and so on. So encyclopedic knowledge about um, the meaning of words. Now, construction grammar says that words are linguistic signs, and they call them constructions. So constructions are form and meaning pairings, and that's going to be probably the most important part of this course. Symbolic thinking, the combination of form and meaning, is at the heart of what makes us human, and construction grammar takes this one step further and makes it the heart of its grammatical theory. But is this just some new branding or relabeling? Well, no, because construction grammar says that symbolic thinking, the combination of form and meaning, is not just something that we need to explain words. Have a look at some of these clips. Flamesters, this is so on Gucci. So this boy just said this was so on Gucci. Now, I don't know about you, but before he said it, I didn't know what on Gucci, well, that on Gucci actually existed as a word. But because I know that un plus something means not something in English, so I've got a form, un, plus a slot, and the meaning not whatever I put into this slot, I can use this to understand what Angucci roughly means, not being Gucci. Morphemes, the little part at the start of unsomething, unfriendly, unhappy, untrue, that's clearly meaningful. So it's a form that has a meaning. And again, that is a construction because, as you can see from the definition, arbitrary and conventional pairing of form and meaning. But as we already see there, constructions don't stop at words, but we have constructions for elements that seem to be smaller. And as you can see in the representation, that can have slots. So that can be filled by many items so that I can say untrue, unfriendly, unhappy, ungucci. Now on to the next clip. Okay, to Becca M finally spilled the beans about her age. Are... Okay. Here Jimmy Kimmel used an idiom, she spilled the beans. Now you obviously know that that doesn't mean that she had a can or a tin of beans that she literally spilled. No, this is an idiom. It's a special meaning that's associated with that form. Again, we've got a slot here, so you can spill the beans, I can spill the beans. So we've got an X on the formal level here. 
But spill, it has to be that verb, and the beans is the noun phrase that follows it. But the special thing about this is that the idiom has got a specific meaning that's arbitrarily associated with this form. So the whole thing means something that someone divulges information. So the beans stand for the information that is being revealed. So again, we've got an arbitrary pairing of form and meaning, and that means we've got a construction. So from words to morphemes to idioms, all of these can be seen as constructions. And as we will see in the last example, even syntactic patterns can be seen as constructions. They were able to cut the turtle loose and set it free. So they just said they were able to cut the turtle loose. Now normally cut means you cut something, right? So you cut bread, you cut the table, you cut the sausage, you cut yourself. So in all of these, you've got two elements, someone who cuts something. But in they cut the turtle loose, hopefully the turtle was not cut. Also, the turtle hopefully ends up being free. So here again, we've got something that we will look at more closely later on in the course, argument structure constructions. Basic human scenes that allow us to talk about events like someone doing something so um, that another person or thing changes its state. So here we've got a pattern, which is completely schematic because you can put lots of elements in there. Um, she wiped the table clean, they elected him president, um, or they cut the turtle loose. But the meaning associated with that is, um, is always going to be that the first element causes the second element, the turtle, the table, the person, to become the third state. Loose, free, clean. So construction grammar takes the idea of a construction of symbolic thinking, form plus meaning, and explains with this how words work, morphemes, argument structure, and as we will see phrases and clauses, basically everything that the lexicon and the syntax have to provide. Everything in our grammar. And for that, we will also need to take a closer look at what kind of data can we use to find construction? And what does construction grammar have to say about language acquisition? because construction grammar claims that it is a psychological plausible theory. So basically it tries to explain how the mind works and how language is actually acquired. Okay, so in this seminar, we will explore constructions as the central unit of language. We will see that construction grammar is a cognitive theory that adopts a so-called usage-based approach. So whenever you say something, whenever you hear something, read or write it, any kind of experience with language will shape your mental grammar. And finally, we will also look at how this scientific theory can explain language acquisition, how kids acquire their language so quickly and so naturally. So much for today. See you next week.